Ipsaritsa som Pajgrush maha, finner det förvärdes här en grimlig grie. Welcome back to my kitchen guys. I'm excited to do this video for you all today. I am obviously in our new kitchen. If you're new, my name is Lynette. Hit the subscribe button. I'd love that. I do a lot of mom family content. I'm Mennonite. We live in Sarasota, Florida. And today's video, as you can tell by the title, is going to be a food-based video. And I'm going to be doing salads and desserts. It's kind of just some random things, but they're pretty common in the Amish and Mennonite setting and culture I grew up in. I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I hope you enjoyed the video. So something really summary to me is a fruit salad or thickened fruit, whatever you wanna call it. There's like a glaze that you put over fruit, uh, cut up like fresh fruit and it's so good. It could also be used on like a fruit pizza where you have a crust and you have like a whipped cream cheese type filling and then you put your fruit on top and then pour a glaze over it. This same glaze recipe could be used for that. But today, just for this video, I'm gonna be doing just like your thickened fruit. And it's something that's pretty common uh, in like potlucks or maybe even like sometimes funerals or things like that in, in the Amish Mennonite settings is this thickened fruit. It's just something easy to make. So before I go any further, I want to introduce to you the sponsor of today's video, which is Misen. They make a beautiful chef's knife, and I am excited to tell you guys about it in just a little bit. So this one just woke up, and I'm guessing I'm going to have to go take a little break. Because she's going to want to eat. Yep. Yeah. Can you say hi to everyone? Can you say hi to everyone? Say hello. If you're new, this is Miss Harper Ellison. So for my thickened fruit, I'm going to be doing the stuff on the stove. So you're going to have pineapple juice, sugar, some clear gel. You could also use different forms of thickener if you can't find clear gel. I had to go to like my bulk and natural to find it. Uh, but th those are the basic ingredients. You just like thicken it and then you let it cool and then you're going to put it over your fruit, which is so good. If you're using clear gel, there's two different kinds. There's a cooked type and a non-cooked type. When you're using the cooked type, you want to put it in when it's cold and it'll thicken up nicely with no lumps. Now I'm just going to let this cool for a while. You can do whatever variety of fruit that you like. Uh, something that I wished I would have had is mandarin oranges. I have some of the real ones in the fridge, like the actual mandarins, but I'm not sure I want to use those. I feel like they can sometimes be a little tough depending. I would probably use maybe the canned mandarins, but I may end up using some of those uh, if I do want it just for color or whatever. So good and refreshing. Mm. 
Do you like it, Oakland? Yeah. Yeah. So I am gonna be doing a rhubarb pie and my mother-in-law made one when she was down here and that's why it kind of sparked my interest. Rhubarb is in season right now. I have never actually made rhubarb pie before. I've made rhubarb desserts. So let me know if you like rhubarb or if you totally can't handle it. I have really learned to love it over the years. And so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna to attempt to make my own pie crust. So if it doesn't work out, I have one of those uh, Pillsbury pie crusts that I could use if I need to, but I thought, ah, I should try it. It's, it is better if you make it from scratch, so I'm gonna give it a go. And I'll have the recipe in the description box for you. So before I go any further, I wanted to introduce the sponsor of today's video, which is Mizen. I don't know if you've heard of them, but I'm so excited to share it with you guys. I love sharing products that I feel are great and that could be helpful for you and that you know are an essential in a home. So I don't think I realized the value of a good chef's knife until I had one a couple years ago and it just it really ups your cooking game and it helps it out so much. Mizen has an average customer rating of 4.8 out of 5 stars and it's half the price of other high-end knives on the market and they have like all of the best elements of both the Japanese and the German knives. Mizen is already half the price of other, you know, chef knives and my link will give you 20% off. So make sure you click that link in the description box and take advantage of it. They also have free shipping over $75. Mizen has a unique shaped bolster that pulls double duty. So the slope shape encourages a proper pinch grip for comfort and control. And then the bolster's placement creates better access to the full length of the blade. It's also made with a premium AOS 10 steel. German steel is known for its toughness and durability and Japanese steel known for its razor sharp edge. So rather than pick a side, they uh, opted to pick the best qualities of both worlds. So it's a hybrid between the two designs essentially. So these have been hand tested and refined by professional chefs and home cooks, product designers, even those who haven't ever held a knife before. Something I thought would be really cool is Father's Day is coming up and this could make a great gift idea for you know that special man in your life and also it could be a good wedding gift. It could be a gift to yourself. Uh, it's just, it's something that is such a necessity if you love cooking and I would highly recommend it. So it's super easy to shop for the Mizen knife. You just go to Mizen.com and it'll open the website and then you're gonna find the chef's knife right there on the first page. You're gonna click on it. There's also different options of handle colors, I believe, and you can kind of check it out there in more detail, but then you're just gonna add it to the cart and put in my discount code Lynette and that will give you the extra 20% off which is amazing. So super easy, make sure you check that out and go click on the link either on the screen here or also in my description box. So for this pie crust, I am no expert and I may have tried once before now, <laughs> but I'm like, I, I, can do, I can do this, right? So I'm using Crisco or you could use like lard. There's also recipes for butter and flour, a little bit of salt and ice water. So just out of curiosity, if you speak Pennsylvania Dutch, like I do, do you say boy grust or high grust? I guess if you're from, from Pennsylvania, you'd probably say boy grust. And I would say pie grust, because I'm from Ohio. I don't know, a lot of you guys know that we speak Pennsylvania Dutch. It's a dialect of German. It has a lot of English mixed into it, but it's something that's passed down from generation to generation. I'm very thankful for it. You learn it as a kid, and then you kind of pick up English as you go. But it's just, it's interesting to hear the differences in accents from area to area. So Ohio German is a lot like harsher. It's not German, but Pennsylvania Dutch is a lot like, we roll our R's. Uh, we would say, so it said it says some pie grishmaha for supper to know it, it says some rhubarb pie, how about one? It's really good. Now you can hear that has a lot of English in it. 
which that would mean I'm trying to get this kind of crumbly or get it into a crumbly mixture. Grimo instead of maybe grimmel. I don't know. I don't have a Pennsylvania accent. <laughs> but in any case, I don't often speak it here on my channel because obviously I know a lot of you don't understand it, but um, it is something that we grew up with and is part of our heritage. Okay, this cook by the recht. This looks about right. It says my vela bavera. I'm gonna try it again, that's what I said. I also thought I should add, I have some help today. Nick is around here, so he's helping with the girls. In case you're concerned that I'm neglecting my children. I'm not, they're well taken care of today. <laughs> it calls for a fourth cup of water, cold water. But I saw some people say that you should use ice, so I'm gonna try that again. So I'm gonna make the rhubarb filling. You're gonna dice up your rhubarb pretty fine and there's gonna be one egg, sugar, vanilla, evaporated milk, and some flour. Then you're gonna have like a crumb topping. So here's the pie. It uh, doesn't look like the nicest on top, but let's hope the inside is. So we've got to have the man of the house test the pie because he's the true rhubarb fan. <laughs> I love rhubarb too, but he's even more so. I gotta go see if I can find him. Mm. Mm. Now I know it's probably not as good as your mom's, but... <laughs> Mom isn't watching that it is, but if she's watching then no, it's not nearly as good. <laughs> mm. We passed the test if we have visitors. Oh, terrifically good. Okay, good. Okay, I'm gonna be making broccoli and cauliflower salad. Now, I don't know that this is just specifically, <laughs> actually I know it's not just Amish Mennonite only. However, the stuff that I grew up with is maybe slightly different than stuff I've had at other places. So I'm gonna make it how I'm kind of used to and hopefully you guys will enjoy this recipe.
this stuff is good. Now it actually gets better the longer it sits. So definitely don't worry about serving it right away or whatever. You could definitely make it probably even a day ahead. So it's a good thing to uh, take, you know, to potlucks or if you have, you know, an event that you're trying to make food for, you can work ahead with this stuff, which is great. Use um, equal amounts of Miracle Whip and sour cream and then put in a little bit of sugar, do it to your taste. Um, some people like mayo, but to me that gives it a completely different flavor. I like Miracle Whip pretty much across the board. There's certain things that I like mayo, mayo for, but I like Miracle Whip. And so then just put a little bit of salt, just a pinch of salt and a little bit of sugar. That's all I do. Okay, so the next thing I'm making is a strawberry feta pecan salad that my friend Dorcas makes. And I will leave her Instagram handle below. She is the homemade for hosting. I've talked about uh, her account before. And I'm also gonna be doing a blackberry sweet tea. She made one and I have yet to taste it, but it looks so good and I've been such a big fan of blackberry recently. So I wanna try and make that. So I'll link both of those recipes uh, for you in the description box. Make sure you go check out her page. She has amazing, amazing food. She's a friend from here. She goes to her church and she's always being such a servant to people. So she loves cooking and things like that. So definitely go check out that page if you're needing more inspiration and like easy recipes and just, she kind of breaks it down really easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this salad. Today and not tomorrow. salad is excellent. I think it's something that I could put in my fridge and have prepped, uh, like not put together, but just have like the salad, like just have the lettuce, the strawberries and the pecans all like separately. And then all you gotta do is add a little bit of feta and put it all together with the dressing and you have an easy salad. That's often my problem is I don't have anything like prepped and this would be a really easy summer salad to have around and it'd be great for crowds too. The last thing I wanna do is make my blackberry sweet tea. So Dorcas also has that recipe and it's such a good sweet tea recipe. I've never been good at making sweet tea, but uh, this recipe will work and it tastes so amazing. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll like cook down my blackberries and strain them and then add that juice to the, the sweet tea to flavor it. I'm really excited about it. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that recipe as well. So for her sweet tea, she uses gallon sized tea bags, which cuts down on the amount of, you know, little tea bags. And then she puts the water and the sugar, the tea bags all in the pot or the kettle together and brings them just to a boil. Don't keep boiling it, just to a boil and then pour it over ice, a lot of ice, and it is so good. You can also squirt a little bit of lemon in there if you want for just regular sweet tea. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and do the blackberry stuff and show you that in a little bit.
right, here's the tea. It tastes really, really good, actually. So um, you're ha gonna have the blackberry here and then just a regular sweet tea. So I guess you have like a two in one. But uh, I can keep the rest of the syrup in the fridge and just add it to even like a mock mojito or something like that. It's really easy to just uh, cook down your blackberries. You could do it with raspberries. You could do it with any type of fruit, really. Just add a little bit of water and sugar and you're good to go. Okay, that was quite a day. I'm really glad Nick was around to help with the girls and everything. Uh, but I am excited to have uh, some dishes around and I hope that you guys will be excited about them as well. Let me know if you try them. Also, make sure you go check out Mise in, in the description box uh, and use my code Lynette for 20% off of their already amazing prices. So stay on the lookout for another video coming up. This will be a Holmes County men and I style wedding coming up. My sister's getting married if you're new here. My uh, second to youngest sister. So then us girls will all be married. But she's getting married here at the end of May and we are gonna be heading up there and I'll be filming again. So be on the lookout for that video coming up soon. I may have to skip a week here or there just because of busy schedules and everything, but hopefully you guys will bear with me. Uh, I am kind of just winging it in this new phase of having four kids. Thank you so much guys. I will see you all next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.